Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over LTSPICE or MacOS, but they're starting to work with operational amplifier circuits. Let's start. So I'm launching LTSPICE. Start a new blank schematic. And as you know, as I mentioned before, if on LTSPICE MacOS, you do not have any toolbar. Instead, you right click by using the two fingers and you start placing components. You go to draft, components. We're going to work with operational amplifier. We have here libraries of operational amplifiers. Let's go ahead and choose. Okay, let's use the LT1211 as an example. On another tutorial, I'll show you how to create your own models for operational amplifiers, how to, for instance, if you want to model the 741, how to do that. That is something that you have there in the library. In, in order to, if you want to keep placing components, you just place them, but if you want to stop that, you just press ESC. And then I recommend that you start doing the wiring. So draft wires. The reason for that is that LT Spice is very good once you place the resistors, the capacitors, any other components to automatically adjust the wiring. So just go over the circuit topology. I'm not using shortcuts in these videos, I'm trying to make it as slow as possible. You can press F3. Okay. So let's place now some components, at least the resistors. This is an inverting amplifier that we are creating initially. To rotate them, control R. This is what I was mentioning. Once you place it, it automatically cuts the wire for you. So it is faster to do it this way. Let's connect some sources. So right click, draft, component, or just press F2, voltage. I'm going to also create voltage in another voltage source for the supplies. Okay, let's connect the ground. So draft, net name, global ground. Let's label a couple of nodes and to do some virtual connections, like I'm going to do VCC right here, as well as the power depression amplifier. VEE. -E. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and start. I'm going to create start with creating this the simplest amplifier. I'm going to do amplifier with a gain of 10, inverting amplifier. So as you know, the relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage in an inverting amplifier or the gain is that we have a gain of minus RF over RI. Let me actually label, label this as an RI, which is the input impedance into this circuit. RF, my negative feedback resistor. So if I start with a 1K here, and I enter a, one, a 10K, we got an amplification of minus 10. Let's go ahead and move drag some of these things around. 
So we can at least view them. I'm going to rename this as R load. I think it's a good idea also to create a label some nodes like the voltage input here and the voltage output. Okay, so let's get started. Let's power this up with uh, 15 volts. To a one volt DC, which I expect ten, minus 10 volts at the output. So with that, let's do a transient analysis. If you go to draft, spice, direct, spice directive, the directive is for a transient, this transient, and then for how long you want to run the transient analysis, I'm going to say 10 milliseconds. And what do we expect? I expect the V in at 1 volt, the V out at minus 10 volts, if everything is connected correctly. Okay, there is no definition for R, so let me see uh, what are we missing. Oh, we are missing the load. I'm going to put a load of 10K for now. We got it. Okay, so let's see. So once you have the waveform viewer, you also get probes. So if you click on the schematic, you can probe the input. You see, okay, we are at minus one volt. You can probe the output and you are at minus 10 volts. If you right click on the axis, you say, well, I want this, the top to be at 15 volts, the bottom at minus 15 volts. And this is working as expected. Now this is not very interesting. Let's start putting a sinusoidal input and see if this behaves as we expect. You right click and you go to advance. You can select instead of a DC, a sign. You have to select a DC offset of zero, an amplitude of one and a frequency of one kilohertz. There we got it. Let's run it again. And boom, we got our input signal with one volt of amplitude. We get our output, our voltage at the output as expected is inverted and we get minus 10 volts at the output. So the circuit is working. Now we can start looking at uh, some of the simple non-idealities of the operational amplifier. This operational amplifier needs to be powered with a plug is powered in this case with a plus minus 15 volts. What will happen, for instance, if I increase my amplitude at the input to two with a gain of 10, it will have to be an amplification of 20, but because that's more than our rails, the maximum you're going to get is plus minus 15, and actually a little bit less than that because of the saturation voltage is approximately one volt or one volt and something more than that. So what do we expect? We expect the input the same, but the output is going to be clipped around 14 volts or slightly less. Let's see it. Let's run it. There you go. Okay, let me actually, to see this bit better, I'm going to put this at 20, minus 20. Now, I'm going to take out the current. So, as expected, I'm going to put a grid. So, if you right click, 
view grid yeah you also get other waveforms that you can plot so input currents etc but in essence we are at 14.3 volts in this case okay now something that is more interesting is that we expected that right we have the rails we are going to have saturation at the output but what happens if we change this load and we make it very small these operational amplifiers have a maximum current that they can provide at the output and so once that current is exceeded the voltage at the output is going to be that current times that resistance um, now if you right click on the model you can go directly to the linear data sheet for that device open it and check the input bias currents the input offset currents the maximum current that you have at the output etc uh, so that's something this loop rate so something i'm going to do here is just to decrease this to something very small like 100 ohms again what happens is that the current here at the output, say for instance, 50 milliamps or 20 milliamps, whatever it is, we can check it in the data sheet, is going to, once the operational amplifier provides all the current that it can provide, and all the current goes, even if it went all through the load, which in reality it goes through the both branches, but even if it went all through the load, well, it's going to be that current times the resistance, the voltage that we have there. So what are we going to see? We're going to see a saturation, not at 14.3 volts, but we're going to see a saturation at much lower voltage. Let's do it. Right there, at five volts. So that's right there, a non-ideality due to the maximum output current of the operation amplifier. Okay, now it's going to be dependent on this R load. So if I put here, for instance, 500, we're going to get saturation. Oh. Got it? So just make sure that you do not load your operation amplifier. You know what is the maximum current that you are able to provide. Now with 1K or something like that, you're not going to have a problem. Okay, let's stop here. In the next example, we can do an AC analysis and see what is the AC response of this circuit. Thank you.